hard times happen. And they're a part of life. And they're not always a pleasant one, but a part nonetheless. Uh, my industry, the entertainment industry, has taken a lot of hits lately. You know, from the last layoffs, to strikes, and emerging technological challenges. But hey folks, it's me, Tyler Edlin, from Brush Saw Studio. And while I'm typically quite optimistic about things, I've been stuck in a rut lately. Uh, despite having several interviews recently, none of them resulted in anything, and that's and that's leaving me grappling with a bad uh, case of imposter syndrome. But this video isn't about directly addressing those challenges. Uh, this one, instead, rather, is about connecting with your audience, you know, through your artwork and understanding the importance. Of that connection because I do feel in 2024 that is far more important than ever so I'm gonna be sharing some key strategies today that I believe can help you achieve lasting appeal in your artwork so if you're having a rough day or feeling like your art goes unnoticed I encourage you to stick around so of course stay to the end I'll share some techniques I often use in regards to lighting and it was a game changer. So of course, stick to the end. I'm gonna share a few uh, tips and techniques when it comes to lighting that I find was an absolute game changer and can certainly elevate your work. So first up today, I wanted to talk about feeling, right? This is the first thing I always consider when starting a painting. And that's the tone or the mood or the feeling that it should have. Uh, to help figure this out, I always ask myself, what should the viewer feel when looking at this? It seems pretty obvious and straightforward, but I know a lot of people don't give that, you know, some consideration. And I do feel, you know, as an artist, evoking an emotional response from the viewer is essential because it creates a, a deeper connection and engagement, you know, with, with your work. And this doesn't need to be, you know, some super deep and complex feeling. But something simple, like whether a work should feel happy, sad, scary, or even funny, right? The goal is just to strike a chord with someone. So with this painting today, right, this nice forest, I set out at the start of it, I wrote a few key words. I wrote uh, calmness, serenity, and optimism. As I am going through a bit of a dreary week in the winter, maybe it's uh, some seasonal depression finally settling in, or maybe it was just one too many strings of bad headlines in the gaming industry. Uh, but I'm I'm gonna be painting this rainy, overcast scene, and I and I am painting this today because you know rain. I feel it's important to to remind us that you know we can't stop what can't be stopped. Like, it's just going to rain. It's going to come flood my basement, you know, when it rains too much. But it's going to happen. The best thing I can do is go with it. I can I can prepare for it. But I can't necessarily fight that. The world will turn. The seasons will change. But the rain falls. And, you know, life is going to go on. And that's part of the theme of this picture. You know, which leads me to another thought that I typically discuss with my students. And that is to remember to consider even the reason why you're creating your picture and potentially who you're creating it for, right? And this can really just be a chain of thoughts and even techniques that you employ that really determine the outcome of an image. And I am painting this for me personally. I have to kind of express my emotions and my frustrations with everything. And this is how it's simply coming out. So this isn't for social media, right? This isn't for a client. It's for myself. I'm creating this first for myself. I do have to take a, a subtly different approach and uh, use different techniques if I'm creating this for a client. If it's for a client, for example, I'd have to provide some thumbnails, some sketches, maybe lay out a plan, establish expectations, but I don't have to do any of that when I'm making this for myself. I can go with the flow. I can make mistakes. I can embrace those mistakes. I can worry about this not being perfect because it is just for me. And I'm not painting this for likes or clicks on social media. 
there's imagery out there that'll do that far better than a dreary rainy forest you know but that's what i'm saying when it when it comes to like Im implementing a feeling into your work is that you got to consider the why and the, the who right in, in regards to the context of that creation and that can help make a lot of decisions a, a lot easier um, emotionally charged artwork does tend to have a stronger aesthetic and impact on the viewer um, if you can you right when emotions are conveyed either through like a expressive brush work or dynamic compositions maybe it's a vibrant color palette and ideally if, if i do my things right this image will have some maybe most of those but if i can pull it off the, vi the visual impact of the artwork will be heightened and hopefully right it'll captivate the viewer's attention and draws them into the narrative or the atmosphere you know that i've created which leads me to my second kind of big bullet point for this video, and that is story, right? Having a story within an image endures, it, it, it's lingering in the minds of the viewers long after, you know, they've moved on. Not every time, but sometimes it's nice, right? There's always good to have a mark to, to aim for, but it serves as the bridge that connects them to our artistic vision. And I think while that initial feeling that we set out to create with a work draws uh, a person inward and captivates their attention it's the nuanced uh, narrative elements that can convey deeper and more intricate ideas even and, and it doesn't always have to be super deep you know it it could just be like a character on a journey even it's kind of what this image is i'm trying to keep parts of it very simple <laughs> it's it's just common for you know many of the students that i do talk with every week to encounter challenges in this aspect and the part of the story that is usually the problem, it, it kind of stems from the lack of clarity. And I do feel like a great way to achieve clarity in, in any kind of painting or illustration is simply to have a clear focal point. It's the best uh, way to start. Think of it as the singular thing your picture is about. A good focal point, right? It's always going to draw and steer the viewer's attention while that mood initially sets up the expectations for it, right? So if art is a form of communications and the stories serve as powerful tools for conveying these ideas, themes, and messages, right? And it's through these narrative elements. It could be the wear and tear on a car. It could be the blood on the ground. It could be the raindrops in the sky. Anything can theoretically be a narrative element right but we can communicate more complex concepts uh, to something like even social commentary in my case today personal experiences uh, you can even implement cultural perspectives and it just again can foster some it's it's a good way of fostering dialogue and reflection among right potential viewers so while clarity is important and the opposite of confusion right there are multiple ways that we can achieve this in a painting uh, one way would be like hard world building and that's just a blanket term i'm using here where i'm describing creating very detailed and structured uh, elements with very clear direct intentions and explanations for everything in a scene right where you're basically leaving all the breadcrumbs out and the other method that i generally go to with all my paintings is more soft world building which on the other hand right it's, it's a little more flexible and it focuses more on creating a general framework or a backdrop for a story without getting into the exact specifics uh think of this like a typical studio ghibli film right like we we get a handful of characters and the setup but most of the lore and most of the backstories it, a lot of it goes unexplained and we can kind of uh, interpret that and that's what I like to do with my paintings personally and I find the paintings I do that the best with generally um, are received the best as well like it, it's just painting in broad strokes leaving some aspects open for that interpretation now for my third major point today and and that's lighting I've got a lot of videos on lighting so if you're new here definitely go back and check some of those out and I love talking about it for me lighting is simply the icing on 
the cake. It's how I choose to wrap up and deliver the message of the picture, right? Uh, for me, it ties the mood and the story together with intent, right? That's the, the probably the key word from today's video is intent. The intent for who it is, for, for why you're doing something, right? It, so much intent going around. Um, lighting has the power to contextualize and transform any scene or scenario. So we know singular color choices can define the mood or tone for a piece, right? Like blue can be calm and red can be energy or anger. Um, lighting can dramatically influence that mood and the atmosphere of it, right? And, and I'm talking simply by adjusting the intensity of that color, maybe the direction that it's coming from. Think of pictures where you see under lighting versus lighting coming from straight above, it makes a very different uh, feeling. And of course, the color of the light, right? Anyone can evoke various emotions and create different atmospheres. So like, for example, in this painting, while it's strictly soft and diffused, right, very overcast, it has a very natural feeling, somewhat soothing, of course, with all the greens and the rain. But I do want to include a bit more optimism to it, a sense of balance. So I, I probably will add more oranges and yellows, right? Which should indicate that by the time I get to the finish line. Because right now, with, with again, just the cool lights, it does evoke more of like a cooler mystery and suspense sort of vibe to it. And that's not exactly what I'm going here, but the warm light will eventually kind of fix that. So for me, it'll be the subtlety that lies in between there. But, uh, you know, lighting can also be used to direct the viewer's attention and to either like emphasize key elements, you know, within your picture, right? So by highlighting certain areas or subjects with like a brighter light or casting shadows on less important details, we of course can guide the viewer's eye and create a sense of visual hierarchy. Visual hierarchy is great and it always sets apart the the really great pictures from the average ones so right strategic use of lighting we can use it to draw our attention to our focal points right and that's going to help convey that narrative uh, significance and of course enhance that storytelling within a picture like for me with this picture it'd be very easy to just drop some sunlight you know on on the character that i'm going to add uh to this but i i want to do it with a little more subtlety this time around uh, but it it will based off our lighting choices uh, show us where to put the details because um, it's going to help us define the forms and and create three-dimensional shapes of the objects and the pictures right so it, it, it light will reveal the contours and the textures and the volumes of anything in our picture and it's not always about more detail more realism is better but it's how kind of you're using the elements within your scene. How effectively are you creating a sense of balance with those? So we're at the end and I did promise at the beginning my lighting strategy and tip. So we're going to go over that now. Uh, generally, as a brief aside, I do save all special effects for the end. So I've referenced rain in this picture numerous times out of this picture. I won't actually add the rain to the end and I'll do it in a couple little layers as you s just see me build it up there. So that's my pro tip number one, right? Save special effects, things like glows, uh, lens flares, streamers, um, embers, if you've got sparks, things like that. Just save those for the end. Get the painting structural elements in there first. Uh, but for the tip itself, it's to actually do this. Paint a scene in its most natural sort of state with the materials. Uh, this is technically called the local color, right? So you're just painting objects as they would appear without any sort of light. So by default, we would no normally kind of associate this with overcast. It's just on the cooler side of those de defaults. And that's exactly what, what I have here, right? Is a very kind of cold, very, very gray version of this painting. But it allows me the flexibility that I can get in here and basically turn the lights on just with a few adjustment layers. 
Now there's a number of ways to do this in your painting software of choice. You could just very blatantly <laughs> drop a bunch of orange in and put it on color dodge or overlay, right? Something like this. And then just simply mask out the areas you don't want to be lit. So in this case, see, like I would remove it from this shadow shape right here on the shadow shape of my little robot guy. You know, he's just talking with these birds, right? You're, it's it's an additive and, and subtractive sort of method, but I'm only ever worried about one thing, and that's what helps me get these paintings done, you know, pretty fast, is that I'm not really focused on the overall lighting super early on. I'm painting it very generically overcast, and then I can play with how I'm bringing light and feeling uh, into the scene. So, and, and that's exactly what I'm doing. This is a work in progress. Please, please don't take this as something's finished, but right, I've blocked in all the major shapes of the castle with their local colors, right? So no light whatsoever. And this is a slight little bonus tip is like, if I am on the lighter side of these, I just make a, an adjustment where I darken that even further. And then I can hit it very specifically where I want that light to go. So it's a very flexible process and it allows me to compartmentalize the different steps. Yeah, so I had a bit of an off week, but I'll prevail. These things kind of happen. I'm going to get back up on the horse and uh, try again. But I do feel in this new technological age that we're entering, this age of AI, that it's going to be more important now than ever for us to be intrigued by the creators of the artwork we admire as much as the art itself. And it is important to allow ourselves to step into the limelight once in a while at least and get a little bit of that recognition. Um, because for us, you know, the creators, we're going to carry the essence, you know, of our own humanity and our art will be that driving force that does connect us to one another, right? We're all in part of that tribe. So the narratives surrounding our art are going to be poised to be more significant now than ever. And that can't happen unless we put our face with our work and unless we share our stories. But I will catch you guys in the next videos. Feel free to share some of your stories below. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a moment to let you know if you are a creator or an art student over at Brush Sauce Academy, we have many options from you. Ranging from the very cheap and affordable Patreon, which gets you access to over 300 video pieces of content and the exclusive Discord community. If you want to get more serious and accelerate that, we also have group and one-on-one -on -one mentorships available. I personally hire industry-leading professionals to help you guys boost your career and implement the skills that you need to thrive. Links below for everything.